Welcome to the second tutorial in the Creating and Populating Balconies mini-series. In the previous tutorial, we explored how to create the balcony structure using rail clone and simple closed splines. Now we're going to build on that by populating the balconies with various objects to bring your scenes to life. We'll use some of the smaller but handy features of Forest Pack 9 to make this process fast, flexible and easy to update. Before we start scattering items, let's quickly review what we have so far and get our forest pack object ready. If you didn't follow the first tutorial, we're working with rail clone generated balconies. Each balcony uses a closed spline as its base. We'll use a collection of small assets, for example chairs, tables or plants, in this case loaded from Chaos Cosmos, but you can use assets from anywhere. The only requirement is that they fit within the boundary without overhanging the edges. And we'll start by selecting these objects we want to scatter and then click on a new forest pack object button. Turn on populate from scene selection and set the mode to generate. Select the spline you want to use and it will automatically apply the forest pack object. And if you look at the geometry rollout, you'll see the items we had selected when creating it have automatically been added. To ensure objects don't intersect with the balcony railings or walls, go to the areas rollout and change the boundary checking mode to size. This option removes any objects that overhang the perimeter of the balcony. In the distribution rollout, reduce the density value to scatter more objects. Pick a value that ensures that even the smallest objects are well distributed. So while this distribution may look very dense for large objects, in a minute we'll turn on collision detection to automatically prevent overlaps, allowing you to focus on smaller object placement. So scroll to the bottom of the distribution rollout and enable collision detection. Turn on preview and viewports to see the results in real time. Looking good. So next let's address the issue of balconies looking identical due to the fact that the splines are directly one above another and share therefore the same distribution pattern. And this is because by default Forest Pack generates random values based on the XY position resulting in, as you can see, identical distributions for stacked balconies. In Forest Pack 9, we added a couple of new checkboxes to compensate for this. So in the areas rollout, enable separate subsplines. This ensures each balcony spline acts as an independent scatter area, even if they're overlapping or stacked vertically. It's not an obvious issue in this scene, but sometimes when stacking areas on top of one another, Forest Pack reads them as a series of include and exclude areas. This button tells Forest Pack to use each subspline as a separate include area and ignore all the rest. Finally, enable randomize stacked. Now this one forces Forest Pack to re-randomize objects and their transformations for each individual subspline, resulting in unique layouts for each balcony. To further improve the uniqueness of each balcony, we'll tweak the probabilities and introduce some gaps in the scatter. So you can, for example, lower the probability of specific items, large or eye-catching objects like parasols, for example, and this will prevent them from appearing too frequently. In the geometry rollout, you can also add an empty object to the list. This creates intentional gaps in the scatter and causes each balcony to have the illusion of a different distribution pattern. By reducing the probability of this empty object, you can vary the density and create more natural randomized gaps across the balconies. And maybe to add a further touch of realism, we can introduce some randomness in scale and rotation while keeping objects contained within the balconies. To do this, go to the transform rollout and enable random scale and random rotation to make them look less uniform. And that's it. With everything in place, we can prepare the scene for rendering and ensure it looks great. So let's render the scene to see how the populated balconies look. The scatter should appear varied, natural and well contained within each balcony. So in this tutorial, we used Forest Pack 9 to scatter objects across our balconies. In the next and final tutorial of this series, we'll explore how to add trailing or hanging plants around the balcony edges using Forest Ivy. Stay tuned.